Hello everyone, and my name's Bob Mitch. This is the big one. It's been six years or so in the waiting, I think. And finally, the Karak has become available to not everyone on the PTU, um, or backers of the standard edition Karaks, or those without the CAX upgrade, which involves myself. So I'm going to go and take one of these things out now. We're going to go and have a look around. This thing has been long long expected and as you can see this is a large hanger it's not um, like 890 jump sized I don't actually know how I open this I assume there's a button oh there we go so this is my not my first time getting in a Carrick because I've been able to sneak aboard some of the Ibukati ones but this is certainly my first time opening and flying one of these things so I'm gonna do this thing from scratch and uh, have you guys follow me with the tour so if you haven't already been on one of the tours that one of the EVO guys has been on, um, here we go. So this is the rover bay. You can see this thing retracts. You've got enough room for two Ursa rovers in here, or maybe an Ursa rover and various other vehicles that you may want to contain. If we come through here, we have two options. You can see we've got a docking collar, so that's where the docking collar is for all the ships. This goes into the, uh, the sub-deck, but what we want for now is this, which is the elevator. So this is the elevator that will take us up to the bridge and beyond. And you can see we've got habitation deck, technical deck. We are going to go up to the technical deck and see if we can fly this thing out using its clever little, should I say, second bridge. So we come up to the technical deck and going heading towards the rear of the ship, you can see we've got the hangar here for the Pisces. If we go forward, however, you can see we're going to other areas. So we've got the drone room in there. In there we have the repair room, so it's like a component repair room. We have a room full of escape pods. And if we come forward, you see we've got two co-pilot chairs, so gunner operator chairs. We have the big the sort of viewer hollow table here and we have a standing desk pilot station so see if we can't turn this thing on flight ready so this thing is a pilot seat it has reduced operation and have, um, instruments as I understand not exactly sure what that entails but I'm sure we'll find out so from where I am on the PTU I am on the uh, the harbour above um, Huston, because that's where I got dropped off with the last person who was flying a Carrick on the server. This thing is so wide it barely fits in these hangars. It's so tight on either side, so flying these in is going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, even using the assisted autopilot. You see Hurston down there? At Hurston, Lawville, sorry. But let's have a go. So we're in the air a bit, raising the landing gear. Why, that's so tight. And there we go. There she is, in all her majesty. So we'll take her down to... My phone just went off. We'll take her down to Hurston and have a quick look. I'll make you a tour of the exterior later. but. This is a standard edition character, as I understand. This isn't the Expedition Library one, so... You see, the view out here is very pretty. I wonder if Operay is going to be in daylight this time. It would be very good if it was. Otherwise, we may just have to try and find a forested area somewhere around Hurston. Let's go down that way. You can see the antennas on the top of the hull there folded down. We've been told that these are tied directly into jump points, so we can't extend the four fishing rods, if you like, manually um, from where we are on the ship currently. They're to do with jump points and they're directly tied into how jump points operate or navigate. So we will have to see.
You see the lovely new engine design on the back here. So they got rid of the V engines and they've replaced them in a straight line. We sweep around, you can see one of the ball turrets. The turrets, having sat in one, in one of the uh, journeys with the Evocati people, are very... They're very cool, I would say. that It's like being inside a TIE fighter when you're inside one of them, because just the way they look, I will show you when we get going and uh, get down to the surface. Hoping this server doesn't 30k, which it has every probability to. So, you see one of the other manned turrets on the top there, and on the bottom here there's also a manned turret which you can go down in. There are remote turrets, which ones are operated by the uh, gunners is yet to be seen but again it's another thing that we'll share and explore so we're definitely going to go and have a, a long run through of this thing and have a look. One thing I've noticed with the camera angle is that the camera angle here seems to be very it, it's like it's had its depth field changed or its field of view it almost feels like it's panned out too far similar to the 890 but the 890 got it right where this, this feels a bit rough coming down to the surface now See the light changing on the glass. This thing is a big girl, but she is quite manoeuvrable. crash here. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. God, that was bumpy. I wasn't expecting that to come down that hard. I botched my first car landing and you all saw it. I'm not going to hide it or edit it out. But uh, we will change it for a smoother landing coming down. Why did you not want to level out there? I'm going to do little hops because I want to try and get this thing level on the floor. She doesn't want to. Let's uh, level out. Okay, we'll do it the other way. We'll turn the engines off, or at least we will if I can find the prompt. So the standing desk, as you can see, you just step away from it. She's having a little tweak on the surface there. So we'll jump in one of these because I do want to find out what these seats do. I don't actually know. So this is a gunner seat. You can see the, uh, the chat within the server is getting very excited. All into a remote turret. Okay, so this is using the turret that's on top. So this is not a manned turret. Or maybe it is, but you can take control of it. I don't actually know. Okay, and I would assume the other one takes control of the one on the bottom. That's good to know. So we're going a bit more of a tour now. As I said before, you've got escape pods in the back here. And going right, so we're on the very top deck here. Well, not the very top deck, but the very top deck you can access from at the minute. You've got a repair room, so you can get components brought in here. And it's a workbench, so you can work on components. This is assumed when with the uh, we have more systems and things, so that the bits and bobs inside the ship can be repaired a bit more easily, or at least in some degree, sort of jerry-rigged until you can get back to a station because this ship is designed to stay outside of stations as such for a long time. So in here, this is the drone room. We don't have drones as yet, but you can see they have this mechanism to slide them along the floor here. These are two pods, two operator pods. And these little compartments here eject them outside of the ship. 
um, these are sealed so that they can be ejected into space without having to vent this entire compartment as we learned in uh, the video that Disco Lando did on Star Citizen the other day. This is the hangar bay and this I've just discovered is the button to open the door. I didn't realise that was where it was the other day because I've been exploring when the Eva Carty had been given access to do so. There's the turret we were just controlling with that seat there. And we'll leave that open for good effect. We'll make our way around the uh, hangar bay here. So, as we know, we can chuck a Pisces in here, we can chuck a P 72 or a P 52. We may be able to fit many other things, but that's for people to explore and enjoy. And back here, we have a gantry that takes us through towards engineering, but through the sides here, you can see we have the ball turrets. So, these are just gantries that go out into the side pylons on the carrack. And if we pop ourselves into one of these... You can see it closes off, it seals shut, and then you can see the ball turret getting extended just a little bit. And we'll power it on up here. Switch fire mode, power off, power on. And you see, you see you rotate the ball turret. And like I said, it very much feels like a TIE fighter from Star Wars. This is looking towards the front. This thing's got some lovely nice laser repeaters on it. You destroy all the vegetation around Hurston. We'll pan the camera out a bit and you can see there's the turret I'm sat in. You can see that it's extended out on the pylon just a little bit there. Looks very, very cool. Okay, we'll zoom back in. You can see it rotates back to the side as it yanks the thing back in. Everything unseals and we'll reconnect it back to the ship. People are having some trouble summoning their characters in the chat because you can only call them if you have the non-upgraded variant. So if you haven't upgraded the Pisces, it's a little bit cheap um, how they've done it. But down here, you can see we've just sort of got a monitoring station of engineering. There isn't anything specific in this room that I've managed to discover yet anyway. Carry on through and we come into the main engineering bay. So here we've got the engines and your little mini elevator that takes you down to both levels or you can wander out on the gantry here climb down this ladder and this is quantum jump drive here and I'm not sure if this is where the jump drive is stalled uh, stored, sorry not stalled but if I go back down to the gantry here and then use it to get to lower engineering we have other rooms here that can control and store other components. So you can see we've got these massive, massive, don't even know what all these are. So cooler, okay, so these are the ship coolers. You've got fuel tanks here. Coolers and fuel tanks, not sure that's a good combination in the same space. But if you go to other things, so you've got shield generator 2, life support, you can actually open all these panels and look at the ship components as if you purchase them from stores and things like that, you see. I think that's very very cool. Open this massive one here, or at least we'll if we get the uh, prompt again. Oh dear, door's gone wobbly. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I think this is the quantum drive. Oh no, this is a power plant, so the, the quantum drive is up there. Fair enough. You get the picture, you get what I'm trying to show you. So you can look at all your ship's components, um, where everything is hidden in here, because this is the main engineering. Um, you have to use the elevator to get back upstairs, though. I was trying to be helpful in chat, but someone already got there faster than me. Okay, we'll go back around. Uh, oh, no, sorry, no, we won't. So this is the, the, the top deck as such, where the hangar is. So we'll call the elevator up here. We can go to the cartography deck, which is the highest deck. You can see this just shows us a window here, and the door is behind us. And if we come in here, we have our own 
big dome area which you can see on the outside of the ship. Inside here is this giant, what looks like the Stalatar cartography room from uh, Star Trek. So you've got this giant hologram of the system which is just some nondescript system at the minute which in the future will be able to plan trips and things. If you try and use this you can see it's just an engineer station. It just gives you the chance to modify things like shields and such as per all the other engineering stations in the game. From what I understand, because the character was a military vessel, there has been data mined information where you can switch things out in here, and this room could be filled with a giant quantum enforcement device, so you know, like the um, RSI Mantis and its giant yank you out of quantum travel machine. You could fit one of those in here instead. Either side, you can go to these doors, and you've got an escape pod to the rear. Lovely view outside in the meantime, but if you come through here, you have an airlock. And if you come into the airlock, you can see you can step outside. So now you're outside on the hangar bay. Um, there wouldn't be gravity here normally. There's no gravity plating in this area. This is uh, all just person's gravity that's holding me down in this dust and stone. So we go back inside, we get gravity again. And to the other side. So you just got one airlocked chamber with two entry doors. Some EVA suit pods. There we go. So go back in the elevator. You'll have noticed that all the buttons on the ship, or rather the elevator buttons, are using the new in UI tech. They're not using inner thought, so you can uh, just press buttons as though you're pressing buttons. So now we're on the habitation deck, so you could call this the mid-deck if you like. This giant thing here, which I have no idea what it is. We can make our way round because in the middle here is the medical bay. Now when this was shown on the video, I thought this was just some part of like extra bit of the habitation area, but it turns out this entire thing here is a sick bay. This is an entire medical bay. So you've got this decon chamber here as you go in. You open these double doors and this giant center section, the entirety of it, is all to do with medical. So you've got two med beds. I wonder if you can uh, set these as your ICUs. It doesn't look like it. So these are just medical beds. They don't seem to have any extra play. However, to the sides you've got like exam rooms so you can check things. And there's obviously if you need to do sampling. This is what it looks like some kind of Android smartphone slash iPhone in the microscope here as well as many many supplies all made by Cure Life so same company that does the Medipens and oxygen tanks I've noticed that the room across the other side has uh, more oxygen tanks in it as you can see and more supplies and another telephone microscope and things in glass cupboards I don't think these open no they don't waste disposal or storage. I don't know what they're growing in here. It seems a bit suspect, but hey ho, take it as you will. And then if you go inside this big center room here, this is the main medway. So I did notice on the Evo when I was walking around, normally like on the Cutlass Red, although I think they've changed it now, on the Cutlass and on the 890 you had to get in the bed and set your preferred ICU. You can just walk over here and you can do it here. Set as preferred ICU, screen flips over, done. Um, when you get into this bed, and you get two options so you can do the same thing so you can set it as preferred ICU or you can, or you can get out if you select treat injuries if you're injured as I did one point in an Evo ship um, it takes you inside this giant CT scanner thing and it whirs around you for a second and then it spits you back out again and you are healed as if by magic so yeah this is the, uh, the med bay which I think is a lot more enhanced than I thought it was like I said I thought it was part of the habitation area which is this big bit up here as a matter of fact so that whole thing is the med bay going forward we have the main sort of crew deck area so to the right we'll start on the right we've got the rec room this room is the only bit of the ship I think I'm a little bit disappointed with because I think this was the rushed bit um, yes it's got a six-sided billiards table that we can't really do anything with but there's nothing else in here and I know this is a military ship so I know it's not going to be like the the, the end of you know be all and end all maybe we can reconfigure it and switch pieces out and bits and bobs in here but at the minute we're just a billiards room it's a bit boring it does have a nice view outside though 
if we go through here, you can see we've got crew beds. So this is the uh, the very military style billet bunk bed for your five crew members. So there's five beds, one, two, three, four, five. And they've all got a locker each, so there's five lockers. And we go through here, and we've got showers. We've got amenities for them to use. So they do have their own amenity area. No toilets in this bit because the toilets are in the other bit. So if we pass through the billiard room, the bathroom is actually in here. So you've got these strange like public toilet sliding doors to get to the bathroom. So that's the, the crew recreation area. Although I'm sure there's a, there will be other things we can put in here. It seems just silly that they have a billiards table. Uh, going into here, on the opposite side, we have the mess hall room. So again, nice view outside. I'm liking that it has lots of windows, even though it's technically a military vessel, because you don't want it to be a sealed compartment. That's kind of what I felt the Constellation series was lacking. The, the only windows in the way you look outside, unless you were flying the Phoenix, were to go into the cockpit and look through the main sort of entry cockpit window. But in here, we have nice views outside. You got all the amenities for a crew. I don't know if it has a coffee machine that works. It would kind of feel a bit disappointing if it wasn't. So we've got a main mess table and a screen, so maybe they can watch some telly. Make sure clear caution. I don't know if this and like I said, this is my first look, like in-depth look playing with a ship that's entirely mine to use. So I don't know if there's facilities that we can use. It doesn't seem like it though, which is a bit disappointing. We don't have a coffee machine that we can spam coffee from, but never mind. Carrying on the, co the catwalk here, so there's the med bay. We go forward, and to the left we have the captain's quarters. Bit dark, I've noticed. So very gloomy captain. He's obviously meant to be very surly. He's no Jean-Luc Picard. Um, he's going to be very, very moody. So you can see, I have to actually use the torch because the lighting in here is that dim. We've got lots and lots of different things in here. Some beer, some notes, some journals, chessboard, alcohol, because of course you'll need alcohol. And many, many books and things back there. This is the uh, retractable TV that uh, Disco showed us. The captain, in fact, has two of them, which is a bit overkill, I think. Can't do anything else with these books. Uh, you can't do anything with the captain's desk. But going through here, you see, here's his bunk. This is the captain's bed. Not exactly a magical bed for the captain. You know, it, it doesn't, he doesn't seem to have any extra privileges, like an extra bed or anything like that. He's got a nice hold all though. Um, so yeah, bit, bit, bit weak for bringing his uh, maybe his fair lady on board. He's got his own locker his own weapon and storage apartment and such and then he's got his own bathroom and shower so he's got his own amenities but uh, yeah he doesn't seem to have a very special bed for a captain but they could have used this space and maybe made it a bit better for him heading back out we go onto the main route into the bridge so this is the main bridge so here you've got the extra gunner seats and this is the main pilot's chair looking out across space and it's a very, very, very cool view. It's uh, even cooler when you are not flying the ship and you're looking around because you can actually just walk up the giant glass cockpit <laughs> and stare back and look over both levels of the bridge. How cool is that? Oh, I hadn't noticed this before. What's this do? Oh, 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 hello. What's this? What are you? Pilot seat. Doesn't say. I have no idea. Emergency weapon rack, maybe? I don't know. I didn't notice that before. Avionics. Oh, okay, so it's a storage compartment for avionics. The more you know. Looking back in here, we've got the server blades that we were told about, so um, in the future. As we look. Crossfeed line. All compartments. These here are servers. So if you do go out into the deep black, you'll be able to store all of the navigational information and other things that you may come across 
So if you want to do data running, then the ship can do that as well. Radar, another component bay that is open. I don't have a radar. It's nice to know. Anyway, we'll go back and we'll take the route down onto the rest of the sub deck because I didn't explore the rest of the sub deck, did I? I went straight up. Moving around the med bay, which for some strange reason has tinted windows. You didn't. You wouldn't think a med bay would have windows like that looking outside, but never mind. When they only look into a corridor. Oh, okay. So now I understand that, that thing is the rear of that giant CT scanner. There you go. You know, even I'm learning things on the video. And we'll go back down to the sub deck. feels a bit like the Reclaimer, this uh, rear elevator, because it's so big. And the subdeck is the main entry area, so the main egress point. This is one of the cargo pods, so I feel I'm, because I'm right at the back of the ship, I will start going back. This here goes into the aft turret. Again, I don't know if this one can be manned and fired by remote gunners. It can obviously be manned, because there's a seat for it here. Um, we just have to see and do some exploring later on and find out. The weapons locker. Many, many gun racks. Your EVA suit areas. So they open, inside open, but you can't do anything with them right now. I'm not going to do it, but apparently you can get in them and then they close and they lock. And it's like the first iteration of prison gameplay because you can't get out, which is kind of hilarious. We shall move forward. So these here are the cargo pods. So this is where... Oh, a oh, little bit of a glitchy floor there. Something to report. This is where all the Carrack's cargo goes. These are detachable, so you may be able to switch these out in future. As you move forward, you can see that they are twin-doored, so they have airlocked doors between them, so they don't get vented. Oh, it's a lift. I see catwalk cargo pod. So that'll take you down into the cargo pod if you want to go down. So there you have it. And here is where we started. So elevator and the docking collar. So we will have a look at this. Uh, going in, you can see we've got some more suit storage, which is a nice thing because this is where we'll be able to do ship to ship docking. So it doesn't at the minute, but this will. Um, open up onto like an extendable gantry and or trellis as it was called on uh, Inside Star Citizen that will extend out so that we can connect to other ships seamlessly without having to put spacesuits on. And there's the elevator and back in the main ramp. So that's the interior of the Carrack in a nutshell. It's um, definitely definitely got a lot going for it. I do like it although some of it is a bit dark. So, yeah, we'll go to the technical deck because I want to fly this thing with the uh, the two sticks on top again. I will, however, close the hangar door now. I have yet to see what can be fit in this. It's going to be interesting to see that. I've watched people try and shove things in when some of the Vakati ships were flying around, which was kind of hilarious. So, back on the main bridge, or rather the top bridge, and you have a little elevator here that can take you between the two bridge levels, but we want to fly it from this level, because I love this view and I love this feature. So a, a standing desk um, bridge. And there we go. So I do want to show you an animation of the landing gear rotating out. So when we're in the air, if you press N, you see it will suck up the landing gear. And the winglets to the sides will rotate. See, this thing's pretty maneuverable for a ship this size, anyway. We should put our acceleration at full and then we shall let it fly. As you can see, it's not sluggish either, it's pretty quick. I 
have to say, having seen it flying around now a bit and doing different things with it, it is a lot sleeker than I thought it would have been. It feels like it would take up a lot of room for a ship of this size, but I think they've managed to cram everything in very nicely. Um, kind of like the 890 Jump, but whereas the 890 Jump was obviously built for an entirely different purpose and is made for luxury, this is a military ship made very specifically for different purposes. So can have another quick go over the outside since we're uh, flying around here. You can see the hangar bay there and I'm trying to maneuver the camera around so they're in better light. To the right of the hangar bay you can see those two long black streaks. That's the antenna that we can't extend manually. That is something that we have to do um, when we're near a jump point. Obviously we don't have a jump point at the minute. Since she's in flight mode, the last thing I'll do to round off the video is see if there is a uh, button to operate the shutters, which I don't think there is. So we'll go down to the lower bridge and we'll get in the actual pilot seat for this. We've got power, spool quantum drive, open exterior. Don't think we have any more controls down here. Oh, hello. Anything here? No. So it doesn't look as though we've got anything to move the shutters down. If you don't know what I mean by the shutters... Um, oh, I didn't mean to move the character around there. I need to level the back. Going outside... The cockpit was supposed to have these shutters that slid down over the cockpit, kind of like a tortoise pulling its head back inside its shell is the best kind of description I can give it, but as opposed to the head disappearing into the ship, it had shutters that came out and covered the cockpit for security and made it more armoured, um, because this thing is, or was, a military vessel. doesn't seem as though we've got that on here, so something to note. But there we go, that is a very, very quick look at the Carrick. Um, I'm just I'm really looking forward to flying it, hopefully doing some streams with it because this one is, the, the whole release of this thing obviously has been very 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 potent and it's been an incredible area of marketing that CIG have been able to use and I think they were doing well with it right up until yesterday um, and that is when it became available to fly by Evocati people so the Evocati could fly it but instead of doing it on a closed wave the Evocati people were allowed to fly it on or rather the Evocati people were flying it on an open PTU server and I think that was a terrible terrible move on CGI's part um, not because it was the fact that oh I've got a Carrick and I'm not allowed to fly it I don't care about that Evocati are there to test it first that's fine less bugs for me when we get to hold it it was the fact that um, they did it on an open server, so not only did Evocati have to put up with people trying to steal their ships and shoot them in the back of the head, which happened to me several times when I was on a Carrick, and someone on board as well who had managed to get on board like me just went postal and gunned everybody down. It happened several times. Maybe I'll put clips in this video. Um, but it was a little bit unfair in the regards that the people who had bought it or backed it or whatever, it was a case of look but don't touch so you can see what you've got now but you aren't able to do anything with it um i don't think that was a very nice thing to do with a ship that's been hyped up as much as this one has so yeah that that's my two thoughts on that issue because i know that was a big issue that was going on in the community um the ship itself is fantastic i love it um mine has a special meaning because whilst i did have one and i kind of melted the um the package that I had back thanks to a support ticket so I, I now in place of the character that I had with an upgraded Pisces that is now once again the Mercury Star Runner which as we know is something that's not too far away now um, every one of the Citizen Con 2019 volunteers so the uh, the one at Manchester which I went to um, on the 24th of December I believe I'll have a look and I'll probably put a little picture of it in the from my hangar 
um, people who were in the WhatsApp group for it got given a message, or rather they were sent a message, and we got asked to check out hangers. And CIG actually gave all the volunteers an LTI Carrick as a Christmas present, so they were given a free LTI Carrick just to say thank you, because the con was hectic as hell for all the volunteers, as some of you may have made Board Gamer say several times over. Um, it, they're putting it mildly, there wasn't enough of us to cover all the ground. Um, and yeah, it was a busy, busy day, a very hectic and tiring day, but this was just a, a nice way to say thank you, so they gave us a Carrick. So it kind of inspired the name that I might call my Carrick Manchester, because it's certainly grey enough to look like Manchester. Um, that said, maybe I'll upgrade my Carrick to the white one that we've seen. It's called an Expedition Skin. Yet to be seen if it is just a skin, or whether it's some kind of modification for it, which I imagine would piss quite a lot of people off given the reaction to the the Pisces variant that they did so we'll have to wait and see but that's my little introductory run on the Carrick that we've waited such a long time for so you guys will have to let me know what your thoughts are I'm certainly going to be keeping an eye out for other people's videos like Bored and I know he'll do a video on it and eventually Morphologist Fantastic Morphologist and his Architect series so I'll keep an eye out for those I suggest you do the same in the meantime happy flying around and I'll hopefully see you more around in this thing in the verse. Take care.